Alright guys, so today I'll be teaching you how to calibrate your TV. It's not as hard as people try to make it seem and I'll be showing that here today. Yes, you can use something like Kalman Studio or you can use the Kalman for your respective TV brand like Kalman LG, Samsung, or Kalman for home LG, Samsung, Sony, so on and so forth. Um, so once you have your software, I mean you could also use Lightspace, but I recommend Kalman. It's the best, so that's what I like to use. Um, again, you want to make sure you have a color meter. You have a couple different options as far as what you can use. For this, I am using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, but you also can use one of these as well. Just show you. Digging in my little bag here, okay. You can use the Color Checker Display Plus. Again, this is basically the same thing as the i1, just a little bit stronger. And you can also use the i1 Display Pro itself as well from x -Ripe. Um, that one's a little bit harder to find, but you can on eBay and stuff like that. I'm using the Video Forge Pro. You probably can't see that, so I'll turn on the light here. Again, Video Forge Pro. Again, you just connect it via your HDMI to the TV, your data cable into your computer, and your power cable. Those are what those three cables are. Really self-explanatory. It's on auto. You don't really have to do much more than that as far as it picking up the signal and all that good stuff. And then from there, it's really self-explanatory, but I want to get into something that is kind of not always talked about. So you can see here, you have a two point, you have 30 and 100. 30 represents the darkest part of the grayscale. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that light so maybe you can see a little bit better. Represents the darkest point of the grayscale, but 100 is the brightest point, obviously. So what we're gonna do is decide. 30 is basically just a general calibration, but if you know you're not going to do any further calibration, what you really wanna do is you wanna locate 20, and 20 by 100 is what you want. Some say 20 by 80, but I found 20 by 100 usually will give you a pretty darn accurate looking picture because it'll tackle the darkest and the brightest, basically. Okay, so then all we're gonna do is we're gonna read series to see where we are. Okay, and now it's not going to pick up right now because I unplugged it, I think. So I'm going to have to plug it back in. Give me a second. Okay, so I plugged it back in and we're reading the series. When you read the series, you can analyze it in a couple different ways. Again, if you go back to the 30, this is for a more generalized way of calibration. Again, if you do 20 instead of 30, again, 100 never changes. That's just you make doing it in case you're not going to do a multi-point grayscale adjustment. That's why people would recommend you do 20. But for the most part, you're gonna see 30 and 100. Now, the thing you can notice immediately is that in the lowest part, there's just way too much red. It's way too high. And then there's just way too much damn blue in the brightest portion of the screen. And overall, in general, the screen just runs really, really blue. And that's something that you can't get around. But again, you can try your hand at adjusting. Now, once you know what is too bright or too dark, again, and then we're gonna go and hit read continuous. We're gonna grab our remote, and then we're going to open up our settings. Then we're gonna go to picture, right? And then once in picture, we're in game mode. We're gonna go to advance. We're gonna go to expert calibration, white balance, two point, turn it on. And then we're going to adjust from there. Now we know the darkest portion was too red. So we're gonna to go to red offset, or the darkest portion of your grayscale in this example, for the two point. And we're just gonna lower it down, and we're gonna watch. Again, it will affect both. I'm gonna go down some more, down some more, and, oh wait, that was my bad. Be sure you watch out for this, cause I can't tell you how many times I actually end up doing this by mistake. So make sure you go over and you freaking highlight that you're going to have the 30, because I, I literally do this all the time. A simple fix though, but as you can clearly see, it'll go down as you click on your TV here. I got negative four right now. Go to negative five, and then you can see that's a little too much. Now we're gonna go back to negative four, and then it kind of balances out, but I don't like that we have too much blue. So then in the blue offset, we're gonna take away from the blue, and we're gonna keep taking away until we see that graph basically equalize like you see there. Then we're going to go manually select. Don't do what I did the first time, okay? We're gonna hit 100, and now it'll track for 100. 
and then we're going to go up in our settings to the gain. So offset is dark, gain is bright. That's the easy way to remember it if you're just getting started out. And then you're gonna go blue gain and we're gonna go down until that graph equalizes, right? We're just gonna keep going down on the blue since there's way too much of it. We wanna get that blue completely normal. Red's going up a bit. So we're gonna try to lower it by one and see what that does to the graph. And as you can clearly see, the graph is starting to equalize. We go negative two. And I would say that that's pretty darn equalized. Now I'm gonna try to get the red on this side of things a little bit better on 30 again. So we're gonna go back to 30, okay? And then we're gonna look at what the graphs do because sometimes they do change. And I'm going to change it as so. And again, another thing you can do is just minimize the menus as small down as you can so it's not affecting your white balance too. And then now we notice that we don't have enough blue. So now we're going to take away from the green, even though some people say you never really want to do that. You can take away from the green, you can take away from the red, and by doing that, that'll kind of raise the blue. By the time you go down raising the blue, it won't be nearly as destructive as you can clearly see. It equalizes the graph pretty immediately. And so that's what we have there. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit stop. And we're gonna check where we are. Always wanna check where you are. So it's really easy. Just hit read series at the bottom here. And it's gonna read, right? Our darkest portion on 30 is pretty perfect. We still got a little too much blue in my opinion in the 100. Now granted, I'm being really overzealous with this. You do not have to be. You could just stop right there because if you right click, you'll know where you need to be if you go to properties in Kalman. And on this side, you'll see that it'll say line, graph, bar, column, and that'll change the way things look on the screen and everything. But what you want to do is it'll give you a target point, I believe. It'll show you where the target is usually, target lines. I'm not seeing that here, but sometimes it will show up there and it'll say target line and then you could just hit it and it'll tell you where it is. But essentially we're, we're on the target line, right? You want to be right here. Blue again, in my opinion, is just a little bit too much. So we're going to go and read continuous so that we know what we're doing on that, right? Then we're going to open up our settings again and we're going to go into our picture settings and we're gonna to go to expert calibration, two point, and we're gonna to go to blue gain. We're gonna click it so it minimizes, and we're just gonna lower it down by like one. When we do that, the graph equalizes pretty immediately. Okay, we can back out of it. And with nothing on the screen, this is what it will look like. We go to 30, and with nothing on the screen, this is what 30 looks like. A bit hot on the green but you can't really do too much about that that's about where you need it to be and then you just read series to do a final confirmation check and that's it that that's that's how you calibrate your TV it's literally that easy it is not nearly as hard as people try to tell you and now one of the things you want to look at well I, my thing went down just then we're gonna hit stop stop and then we're going to read the series again it went on the gray screen so that's why you see the, the charts go differently because that's where multi-point grayscale calibration comes in when you have just a single shade of gray or whatever the case may be so again you read series you have the pattern on the screen for the ire that you're looking at and as you can clearly see our graph is damn spot on our delta error is on average 0.4 with a max of 0.6 and I believe if you do it here, right click, properties, uh, where are my target lines? It should show you that. Usually it will show you target lines. I don't use them, so I don't know where they would be. But sometimes there are target lines. I think I just don't have it here. Yeah, show target lines right here. Okay. And then you just click show target lines. And it'll show you, man, like the green is like ultra ultra safe the yellow is your target the red is danger and we are well below the green 
So it is really accurate on the two-point grayscale adjustment. And that is literally as easy as it gets. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, one final tip, you always want to use raw XYZ. So just remember that when you're using these color meters, just go raw XYZ and it'll always give you the most accurate picture. Now there's some debate as to whether you do the DE2000 or if you adopt a different method, which is the ITP, as you see here, you know, the Delta Era 2000 or the ITP. This is where you'll get even more accuracy because it's a lot harder to do this one, but the most generally used one is Delta Era 2000, right? Now, this is just a special note too. When you have a reference accurate calibration on a two point grayscale adjustment, as you see, average Delta Era 0.4, Max Delta Era 0.6, again, in the green, well below any kind of perceptibility. That does not mean that your image is going to be accurate across the board. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So when you go into your workflow in Kalman, you can go into the multi-point grayscale adjustment, right? And this will show you a bunch of different issues that your grayscale has across the board. But what I actually like to do is, honestly, you can go to poster pre I like to go to the pre-calibration capture. And if you go to the pre-calibration capture and then you hit read series, it'll show you what your accuracy is regardless because it's just going to read the entire accuracy across the board between your RGB balance, your EOTF, your luminosity, everything, and then give you one final thing here. Now, again, it's not to say that it'll be so far off the mark, but you'll see what I mean when I say it's not like 100% accurate, right? There are some issues and some inconsistencies that would make some people want to say, hey, now I need a 10-point grayscale adjustment. For the most part, it will be accurate, but again, not in every instance. And usually I run into a lot of issues in the darker portions of the screen. That's usually where I pick up a lot of problems. Now... That's where you see like the max delta error is 3.3. And again, anything three or lower is imperceptible. But you know, the 0.3, that's where you're noticing you have some inaccuracies there with an average delta error of 2.1. Then again, that's where people kind of go a little crazy and they start doing these crazy RGB balances. But again, it's just the, the lower registry of your grayscale is running way too blue. And then you have way too much green in the middle. And then when you get to, again, towards the end, it gets a little bit more balanced, but green still remains like a over, overly done color, which is why that jaundice look will happen in your screen. And so when you read these charts and you see this, it basically shows you like, hey, you know what? There is a problem with my image. I should adjust this. And some people go crazy. But honestly, most people will be fine with that 3.3 right there. And you really could call it a day because look at your EOTF. Yes, some things are over brightened. It's not following the curve 100%, but it doesn't really need to either. Again, with the color with an average Delta error of 1.5 and a max of 2.3, you're pretty much good for color because that's, I mean, that's pretty much all you need to do, honestly, but it just isn't 100% reference accurate. As you can see, in some instances, there can be a little bit higher of a Delta error, but in this case, it's just 0.3 over what we would want on a max. But that being said, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.